Okay, so part three of our antibiotic segment here, we'll be going into our anti-metabolites and then also into our time concentration dependent um, and our static versus cytal as well. So first, um, our three different classes of anti-metabolite um, antibiotics that we have. First, we have our sulfamethoxazole trimethoprim, which is often just abbreviated as SMXTMP. Um, these are technically two different uh, molecules, but they come together um, to form one antibiotic. So uh, both sulfamethoxazole and trimethoprim are two different components that have their own separate mechanisms of action that work similarly or synergistically to um, prevent the formation of folic acid. And the brand name um, is commonly just referred to as Bactrim. And then two... Um, electrolytes that we really focus on with our Bactrim are going to be hyperkalemia or increased potassium and hyponatremia or low sodium levels. So um, that can be something to be seen with patients that are um, on Bactrim as well. Then we have our metronidazole, which is often just referred to as its brand name Flagyl. Um, and this is a DNA damaging agent and it does have a, a black box warning for um, being a carcinogenic um, antibiotic. And then it also has this disulfiram type reaction with alcohol where you don't want to, you don't want to take it with alcohol because it will um, cause some pretty unfortunate side effects as well. Um, and then our last anti-metabolite is going to be our nitroferentoin. Um, and two different brand names are going to be Macrobid and Macrodantin. And how I like to remember this is, is basically based on um, dosing. So Macrobid has the BID, so it's going to be the two times a day. Um, and then we have the Macrodantin, which is going to be four times a day. Um, and then some different side effects are going to be the neuropathy, nephropathy, and then um, it can also have some pulmonary side effects as well. Okay, so moving into our pharmacodynamics. So we have something called pharmacokinetics, which refers to our um, ADME, the um, administration, distribution, absorption, <laughs> absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion, um, or elimination. So that's our, our ADME, and that's essentially what the what the drug is doing to the body. And then we have something called pharmacodynamics, which is what the, the drug is going to be doing to the organism. Um, and so we really, we, we think about pharmacodynamics, especially with um, antibiotics, because we wanna make sure that we're um, getting rid of the, the um, bacteria. So we have two different types um, that we could focus on. We have time dependent and concentration dependent. Um, so we have something, I drew kind of this axis here. So this is the concentration of the drug versus the time in hours that it's um, in the body. So we have um, kind of that bell curve of when it gets absorbed um, and then the peak, and then it's starting to um, get eliminated. So our time dependent are gonna be focused on something called the MIC or minimum inhibitory concentration. So it's really important for our time dependent antibiotics that they're staying above this, this MIC line. So we're only going to kill bacteria when um, our, our concentration is above this line, essentially. Then we have our concentration dependent, which is really gonna focus on the peak. So as long as we have some of the drug in the system, we're going to be killing bacteria. It's just a matter of how much of the drug do we have. If we have more of the drug, we're going to be killing more of the bacteria. Um, but then with that peak, we're also going to have some increased side effects too. So it's kind of that catch-22 of how much um, you want to get to get rid of the antibiotic or to get rid of the bacteria, uh, but still staying within um, or under that toxic limit. Um, and so how I like to think about it are just the concentration dependent ones. And I put conch times four because there's four letters and C-O-N-C. And there's also four different types of medications that are concentration dependent. And those that aren't concentration dependent are going to fall into that time dependent. So um, if you can just remember these ones, then you can think the ones that don't fall here are going to fall up here. So we have our fluoroquinolones, our aminoglycosides, our daptomycin, and then our metronidazole. Then we have something called static versus cytal. 
And this is just going to be um, whether or not we're actually killing the medic or killing the antibiotic. Oh my gosh, killing the bacteria versus um, just inhibiting the, the future growth of the bacteria. So um, kind of the difference between cytal versus static. So again, static has six different letters in it, and that's going to represent our six different groups. Um, and I was playing around with uh, the formation of this a little bit to try and see if there was an easier way to remember these six. And I came up with, if you could spell out the word static, um, you could think of sulfamethoxazole trimethoprim being that S. And then T is going to be our tetracyclines. And then A, um, this is going to be our, our macrolide. So azithromycin is, is an example of a macrolide. So that fits in that category. Then we have um, tedizolid, which is going to fall into the um, oxazolidones down here. Um, and that's just an example. We also have the linazolid, which would fall into that category too. And then we have our uh, nitroferentoin, which is our, our macrobid or macrodantin. And then last, we have our uh, lincosamide, which is clindamycin. So um, it spells out static, um, if that helps you remember the ones that are static versus cytal as well.